Close to the end of its long journey to the sea, the Mississippi River passes through the port city of New Orleans, Louisiana. Let's land the Terravator here and look around. New Orleans is built on sediments that were transported here over thousands of years down the Mississippi River. The land here is actually subsiding or dropping in elevation as water escapes from the new sediment below as it is turned into new rock. As the land sinks, salt water from the sea moves inland, threatening fresh water supplies. The river itself, confined within man-made levees, looms high above the city streets, which are far below water level. Every hurricane or flood brings a chance that the city could ultimately vanish into a flooded swamp, as seen in other parts of central Louisiana. On the image, we see an unusually shaped landscape where the river finally meets the sea. Why does the river create this shape where it enters the sea? This is a satellite photo showing parts of the lower Mississippi River. We see the river channel itself and a large, mysterious bit of land jutting out into the Gulf of Mexico. What should we learn more about? Let's gather some data to understand better what's going on here. We can gather data on the river sediment, on the water, and the feature shape, as well as the creatures which live here that will help us name this feature. The main channel of the river is moving steadily, about a mile an hour, and is carrying fine sediments like clay and silt. The water of the Mississippi is largely fresh water, like other continental rivers. Freshwater plants and animals, like these freshwater fish, are common in the river, but not near the ocean. The river is a major waterway for ships. We see docks and marinas supplying local fishermen. We will take a boat like theirs out into this area where the river meets the ocean, where no roads will go. The deposit is made up of mostly black muds with occasional channels filled with silt or more rarely, sand. Out towards the ocean, we can see a few beaches of sand. The water here is brackish, which means it's a mixture of fresh water from the river plus salt water from the ocean. Channels and bars, smaller than the river itself, fan out from the main channel, giving the entire area a fan-like or triangular shape when viewed from above. This area contains species of plant and animal life, especially prepared to handle the harsh conditions created by the changing salinity between fresh and salt water. The fan-shaped deposit is called a delta, named for its often triangular shape. A delta is caused by the rapid slowing of fresh water as it enters the ocean, causing a pileup of sediment to form. The delta contains brackish water from the mixture of fresh and salt water. Special and unique mixtures of species occur here that can tolerate these harsh conditions. Water from the main river channel fans out into a network of small channels called distributaries, which fan out into the shoreline. Muddy to sandy bars can be found in between these channels and are an example of new land being formed today. Shape is an important way we classify types of deltas. Not all deltas are the same. Some deltas have a high amount of river sediment pouring into the sea 
like the Mississippi. Others have little sediment, may be largely shaped by ocean waves or tides. These types of deltas give scientists clues on how the coastline was formed. Let's conduct an experiment to see if we can create a delta in GeoGarage. Let's try to make a river delta in our backyard table. You'll need sand, water, and black felt. This time we will make our area lower in elevation and larger in size. We pour water in the whole pile to simulate the effect of clays and their ability to hold sediment together tightly. As we pour, notice the shapes in the sand that the water makes. We don't see meanders here because the grains are too coarse and the slopes are too steep. But over time we see our delta forming in the ocean along the edges of our pile of sand. You can see smaller versions of deltas all around you if you look closely. Wherever sediment-filled streams rapidly slow down, such as at the base of a hill, you can often find little deltas forming. We can follow this little delta, this little river channel that came out after a recent storm. The water has flowed down and picked up sediment as it moved quickly down the hill, eroding into the shale below. And here, as it exits this little canyon, it slows down. And it can't hold that sediment in any longer, and it just dumps it into this fan-shaped pile full of beautiful, beautiful sedimentary features like bars and channels, point bars, cut banks, all sorts of features that mimic things that you see on scales hundreds of miles wide. Our sensors show the water droplet is moving through distributary channels across the delta Toward the sea, we can see a set of thin islands that lie between us and the open ocean. Let's land the Terravator on that island and see if we can get close enough to finally intercept. <laughs> 